do we have of ever being loved by God? Is God really on our side or are we just cosmic orphans? Let's look at how the Holy Spirit stands with us in John 14 verses 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commandments. Assuming that the word commandments always means the Ten Commandments is a wrong inference. Obedience to Jesus' commands proves that we love Him. He said, if you love who? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. In this context, Jesus commanded to believe also in me. The natural reading is not the Ten Commandments, but His commandments. Jesus reminded us of other commandments outside the ten, like love God and neighbor. Jesus' commands do not dismiss any Old Testament commands. They do dismiss a legalistic letter of the law approach by fulfilling the spirit of the entire law through faith. I'll pray to the Father and he'll give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Father or from the Father and the Son? This verse seems to say that the Father sends the Spirit on behalf of the Son. Yet on another occasion we read, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Greek word variously translated as advocate, helper, comforter, is parakletos, a legal term for a trial lawyer who advocates for us. It also has a broader meaning of someone called to our side to help us. This means that the Holy Spirit is on our side, defending us. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit's also called the Spirit of Truth, It should be no surprise that our best arguments often fail because the world cannot receive the Spirit of Truth. Let's simply trust the Holy Spirit to do His job. He will guide you into all truth. I will not leave you orphans. I'll come to you. The word is orphans, not comfortless. The context is little children from John 13, 33. So, here, come, refers to Jesus' presence through the Holy Spirit. We're not orphans. He's with us. Jesus promised, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you'll see me. Because I live, you'll live also. Jesus spoke of eternal life. Because I live, you will live also. This refers to the higher Christian life in Christ, independent of death. Because he lives, we're partakers of life now and forever. This indicates that our eternal life is dependent directly on Jesus giving it to us. At that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. In that day... When the Spirit of Truth dwells in you, that is Pentecost, His disciples will know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. This mystical, personal relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is what the resurrection life is all about. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it's He who loves me. And He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I'll love Him and manifest myself to him. Jesus' words, keep my commandments, includes the mutual indwelling of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with us through faith. Jesus promises that he'll love us and manifest himself to us. Is this revelation a coming different from his second coming? Is it the manifestation of Christ in the Spirit? We don't need to be part of an exclusive church to be loved by God. The Holy Spirit has come to confirm God's love for us. Where is the church? It's wherever Jesus dwells through the Holy Spirit. Wherever His love lives in people.